Carlo from Games, Brains and Headbang Life. It is my pleasure to be here with one of the most hard-working British bands. It is, of course, Ward 16. Well, almost two days removed since your incredible, incredible show on the selfie stage. Guys, how are you feeling? Uh, relieved. <laughs> relieved. Yeah. Relieved. Yeah, extremely relieved, but happy and happy yeah. to be out. Yeah. I'm, I'm, st I'm still up here, still on cloud nine. Yeah, it hasn't really sunk into me yet. I'm no. still processing it. Yeah. yeah. It's so nice to be able to pu like publicly perform again, be able to get audiences in. It's just a feeling you can't get anything else. Well, one of the most incredible things of it was the fact that it was 30 minutes and you had to pack in so, so much within that time. Was it everything you hoped it would be? I, I don't know. It was. We just played everything like double time. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, it, uh, I'm happy with the, mu the music. I'm really happy with because I know that was one of the things that we were working hard on. With the the theatrics, I didn't see a lot of it because I was just concentrating on what I was doing. I so I didn't really see a lot of it happening. Yeah. But it, it, loads of people have been saying really nice stuff about it, so I'm, I'm assuming it went really well. So. I was performing most of the actual stage bit and I didn't know what was going on because I was going at such high speed like, right, yeah. go and this and that, but it was so much fun. We had, we had really good responses from it as well, so... Well, obviously the planning of such an elaborate stage show is best you can do in half an hour. I've got to give us some insight into how almost you get the balance right of fans of Ward 16 come along and they get the story and those who've just wandered in to see you because of curiosity and I'm pretty sure you're responsible for most of that, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get the um, balance? How did you get the balance right in between the storytelling that you obviously do across the album and the new fans who just wander in because you're the only bands playing and they're curious to see what's going on? Um, I don't know. I guess we just well, we're we're just, we just, we had to condense it down to half an hour anyway, so it's kind of going to follow the, the story as it is. So we just we just play the songs for the, Looks like right for the story is for the song. It's just like a trailer for the. And the yeah, because we don't get to play our full set quite a lot, so. We've learned over the years to uh, so find a way to almost abridge the story without it looking like a novelty either, which is one thing that we were concerned of because you know you only have to look at us and then you know we're known for chainsaws and blood and things like that. But it's important that people understand that that is part of the storyline and not just because we can do it. So when we were writing this album, we were very conscious of what we could perform and how it should look along, but it wasn't something that we kind of uh, thought about it after we wrote the music, it was something that we were really conscious of when we were actually writing it. And then when we started thinking about getting to blood stuff, because we didn't think we were playing it, and obviously uh, we thought the, the gig that we were preparing for was for the launch gig. Yep. So everything I think was quite scaled down. And then we found out we were playing so free, it's like, okay, let's just go rock right through the bunkers with it, make it big, make it bold, get as many big monsters on as possible, and try to break the shackles of what limitations we sometimes put on ourselves so yeah you were saying things like oh well if we do that we're not going to be able to fit it on the small stage and I was going matter we, we work the small stage out so let's just go wild go wild we've, we've got the selfie stage yeah it's better, I think it's better if anything don't look if anything the set that we made was too small for the selfie stage we should have gone bigger yeah. next oh. time we go bigger yeah, I was going to say, let's be honest guys, this is New Blood Sophie, we know what's next, right? <laughs> yep, world domination. World domination, <laughs> yep. We weren't, going to, we weren't going to tell them about that until we were in, <laughs> <laughs> it was in place. We had to like lay the groundwork. Take it over the world. <laughs> you can, uh, we, no, hope, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we can really hope it's all, uh, no, this is fulfilling the dream to be on Sophie. Yeah. Mm. It's the biggest gig we've ever played. Yeah. And it's actually not the biggest gig, only the biggest gig, but it's actually conceptually wise. It's the first time we've really performed to almost like the limitation of where we'd like it to go. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, definitely we want to be hitting that stage in a couple of years. But we've got loads of, still got to prove ourselves along Absolutely. the way. And, yeah. It's more than that as well. I mean, obviously, you guys suffered as much as anybody else during the last 18 months the release of the new album, not being able to capitalize on it. Uh, an album release show that's been delayed how many times? 
three times. And that's taken place at the end of the year, right? 18th of December, Manchester Academy 3. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Well, yeah, it'll, 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 let, let's look around. But let's, yes. Fingers yeah. crossed, it, it's on its way. I the, think the big thing is hopefully that the anxiety of this place was in the lateral flow test in mm. the morning and you only have to have a positive or negative and it's off. So it's, yeah. uh, hopefully all that will be cleared up by then as well and then we won't need to worry about tests days before or whatever. But, do you kind of see this as a, um, not a restart, but the re like the starting point again for Ward? It was completely pivotal and, and I was very conscious of it. Like, uh, very, very, very conscious of the fact that this was a make or break gig. Yeah. Because we've been out for so long. It's a new show, new band members, new show, new music, new chapter. And if it had gone wrong, then all the history of the, you know, playing metal to the masses here and everything like that, and what we were trying to aim and achieve for the album, things like that, I think would have been very difficult to pick back up. Yeah. So, so the aim really was to, to come back with a really big bang and to set, set almost like a, a standard that this is we belong here. We're not just a, yep. another kind of yeah. band that have just kind of blacked it. I think we're, we're, we're here to prove that we're we're here. And I, th I think it shows your commitment as two days later and you're still here in your makeup and outfits, babies and children in tow as well. <laughs> yeah, we just climbed into our tents and just got up. Yeah, yeah. 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 They didn't come with us. <laughs> <laughs> um, i got to ask then, was there a point during the show, during the show for each of you individually, that you did take a moment and get to stop and think, okay, wow, we are, we are somebody. Yeah, I'll take I had a lot of that because I had to stop throughout the set because it's my first time at Bloodstock. Yep. First gig with the band. <laughs> so, uh, so for me it was very much like when I could throughout the set, which wasn't a lot, but then moments where I looked out, heard people chanting Wood 16, seeing the pits that everyone was doing. I just had to have a moment of thinking, I'd, like pinch myself, like, am I actually here? And I'm still doing that now, actually. Yep. Two yeah. days later, still soaking yeah. in. I, I didn't see a lot. I can remember seeing, I can remember seeing stuff happening and being kind of going, oh my god, this is happening. Yeah. But I think it was more when people are chanting the name. Oh yeah. yeah. It wasn't just people going, well done, that was like a good song or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was, they were chanting the name. It, it wasn't just for anybody, it was for us. It was like, oh wow. Well, that was, that was yeah. that, so I've been, I've been coming as a hunter since 2009 to Woodstock. Wow. Our very first one specifically, Blind Guardian main stage, I said, I'm going to play this festival one day. But halfway through the set, like you said, hearing people chanting Ward 16, like my brain just clicked. I went, you've done it. Yeah. It's been like almost 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> You've bloody done it. Yeah. And it just, well, it's, but that's not enough. I think that where we learned from last time is that that isn't just it. We're not, I'm not satisfied with that. No, no. Of course. No. No. Um, it's, a and it's, not an, it's not an arrogance that I say we want to be on there. It's, a, it's, it's an ambition. Yeah. It's a drive. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, we want to do it the right way. We want to do it the honest way. We want to do it bringing people like yourselves. You know, this is why we're here today. Is because dudes like yourselves that are doing this for bands like us, yeah. we need, it's, it's fundamental to be talking to because you're here, you've been supporting us all year and stuff like that. So we want to talk to you. It's not a, it's not a job. This is like a pleasure. It's an honour yeah. that we're doing this. So we're, we're aiming for the big stage. We're aiming for something big with a tour next year in the UK. And we're just going to keep grafting, keep doing what we can do. Start writing the third chapter of the yeah. album. We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> and it is going to be so exciting because from a fan's perspective, the person that was in the audience, the moment Burn the Witch, of course, being the newest track as well, was played. That is a moment where, from a fan's perspective, it's like, oh, you're not just great, you're bloody great. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. It was, yeah, it was, you know, we, we, we did invest quite a lot of money into the show and it was important to, to come out like that. It, it's always a bit of a worry when you not just play the, the music that we do, but a lot of the songs start slowly, mm. so it's trying to find a way to capture people's attention while that's slow before it 
closer. Yeah. And I think we look. I think it, it, it was good. It was all right. Yeah. It didn't lose. I don't think we lost people. No. no. If anything, no, I don't I don't know, but it's over in three minutes. It really was. You know, it really was. You know, we've never played these songs live before, so mm. we're never going to know uh, how people are going to react to it and if they yeah. have the attention span for part of it. Yeah. It's it's just really like so different from the but, but I do. I, I can remember. Get like an audible woo in the fires. <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. I think people just expect us to come and just yeah. make up numbers yeah. and whatever. And, and throw a few inflatable chainsaws, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. it's like, no, we're aiming, we're aiming to be mixing in with the big boys. And, um, from yeah. speaking to a lot of people that I saw after the gig, a lot of it has been people obviously had no idea who we were, just wandering past and going, I have no idea what is going on on that stage, and I have to know what's going <laughs> yeah. on. Coming and going, oh, and the music's good. <laughs> it's a really nice sort of people coming, coming for the, coming for the strangeness, staying for the music, yeah. which is perfect. Try to blend the two oh, together. So uh, come for the strangeness, stay for the music. Yeah. yeah. That's the tagline, guys. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think well, that's I think that's the difference between this album and the last album. Mm. This album, the last album, I think lended itself to having little novelties and little bits and pieces that made us. You know, like there's gunshots and there's blood and there's chainsaws where if you step back you could see that as like a novelty, a throwaway novelty thing, whereas this is much more of a cohesive theatrical kind of performance which hopefully dovetails within each other yeah. and, and has more of a narrative kind of tale. Which, fingers crossed, you know, but we've now got to go and do not 30 minutes but the whole hour yeah. and do the same kind of structuring for every single song that they have to do. Which is going to be fun, because we haven't really done that yet. So no, that is going to be incredible. This show, so, yeah. And just before we wrap up then, guys, remind us again, when is this? 18th of December. There we go. Uh, Manchester Academy of Freedom. So a nice Christmas show. Yeah, with the full album from start to finish, as well as some of the tracks from the first album. So yeah, it'll be a, we've got obviously us playing the full album. We've got um, South of Salem. We've also got Pulverize. We've also got a magician going round. Incredible. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBL.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?